Hey, how you doing, ladies of uh, MTC? This is uh, Brother Mike Demps coming at you from an undisclosed location. <laughs> anyway, um, it's my honor and privilege to um, to just share with you something uh, that's on my heart. And this is the last, I guess it's the last message of the year. So I'm privileged and thankful to be able to do this and give you some insight, insights on the you know, going forward. Um, kind of a read from my notes here. So um, I know we're at the end of 2020 and uh, I know some of, of you can't wait for 2021 and you say to yourself, uh, um, I can't wait. This year is going to be over and uh, I'm looking for the next year and all this stuff is happening to friends, loved ones, people you don't know, celebrities and everything like that. Um, but I want you to ask yourself, um, what are you going to be carrying forward toward uh, 2021? Um, is there anything in your life that's going to hinder your success? Is it going to uh, knock you off track? Uh, examples could be a negative mindset. I'm talking to the, uh, hopefully the Christian people out there. Have a negative mindset. Um, also, you could uh, have neg negative people around you. Um, no plan for the uh, for the future of 2021. And that's what we're going to kind of go into uh, today for just a second. Uh, do you have bad habits? Uh, so mm, this is going to be, it's really like a three-part message. But I really want to get to the first part. Uh, more than anything, and then uh, as we carry on toward um, 2021, I want to do the second part and the third part. And uh, during that process, I'll be recapping, um, you know, as we go along, go forward. Um, let me see, is there anything that, uh, like I said, moving forward, uh, your diet or, or your lifestyle? And I guess uh, God brought it to my heart that what we're gonna do. Um, I don't like to work diet. Um, I don't. I, I like to work lifestyle change and and all that because to me a lifestyle change can be something that's um, uh, mental, physical, um, eating better, anything like that. So we want to have a lifestyle change in our lives, not a diet of cutting people out because you know um you can have a yo-yo <laughs> diet and we don't want that we want to have a uh, lifestyle change a, a non-yo-yo lifestyle change in 2021 uh amen um in order to do that um you have to have a written plan uh and every step of that plan you have to have uh, god involved and I'm talking to the believers out there um, at this time. Now I'm believing, you listen up. But the believers out there, every little step we take, was that Bobby Brown? Anyway, uh, that we need to have God, our Savior, Lord, and Jesus Christ with us and all that we do. Uh, no plan is perfect, okay? Uh, but if, you're, if, it, if it's written down, it will help you stay on track and for success. And, uh, and you kind of have to stay off that yo-yo effect. Um, that's that bouncing back and forth. You know, bounce here, bounce there, you know, go from there. Okay? So we're going to talk about that in, uh, in just a second. And then we're going to go through that. I'm just going through my notes real quick. So... We'll pray, Lord, I thank you for this day that you have made. We will be exceedingly glad in it, and we will rejoice in you. Father, we thank you for the blessings of our lives. We thank you for the protection of our loved ones, ourselves, our, our friends, and our family. We pray for those who are uh, having a difficult time. We come against anxiety. We come against depression. We come against anything that tries to separate us from you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. So, when you have a plan, you usually um, should
should have a pre-game plan, a mid-game plan, which is incorporated with changes, and a post screen, uh, a post uh, game plan. That's after you know the game is over. And what I mean by game is over, I mean like maybe that particular goal in your life, or that particular um, situation that you were trying to get through that hurdle uh, or anything of that nature. Okay, so today we're going to talk about um, the uh, pre-game plan because without that, you you know you have to have a plan. Even in sports, you you know you have to uh, look at the team. You know your team you're going to be playing, and, and uh, you do a little scouting you know, or you know prospecting and scouting and stuff, and you come up with a game plan. And uh, before we get too far into it, I a game plan. It needs to be adjusted, and that's what the mid-game plan is, but we're not going to talk about that today. We're going to talk about the pre-game plan. That means getting you ready for for the game, okay? I'm um, just using that in synopsis to, um, like, sports or something like that, or uh, an idea, a uh, game plan, okay? So, um, you say, where do you begin? Where do you start? Okay, I'll tell you. <laughs> Prayer. Prayer. Praying is where we all should start. Um, just prayer. You know, asking God for the plan, for the green, for the uh, pre-game plan, for the uh, idea, for the uh, endurance and just the setup, you know. Um, and I'm going to read from, uh, we're going to go from Philippians 4, 4 through 6. Okay, here um, it says rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Um, let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Uh, be careful or anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication and thanksgiving, let your request be known unto God. Okay, so we're going to go break this down a little bit real quick. First thing you should do, and I'm talking to the Believers Club out there, and uh, uh, is rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord because you have life, you have health, and you have strength. And if you don't, you're still a, a living, breathing being right now because if you hear the sound of my voice, you are living, okay? So we're going to rejoice in the Lord always. That comes first. Rejoice in where we are. Thank God for where we are today. And some people didn't make it, amen? So rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I like the way he said, again, I say rejoice, okay? And number five, I'm going number five, when it says, let your moderation be known unto men. The Lord is at hand. That is saying to you, let people around you, let people you work with or know or hang out with or don't hang out with, don't know, you need to be an, a good example of Christ in your life. If you're at, if you're right now, I'm talking to the believers right now, okay? Um, the gentleness, the, the, the willingness to be around, to have a good attitude, um, to be a good example of Christ. That's what that means by let your moderation be known unto a man. So let your, you know, if you're a Christian person, like I, I'm hoping you are, and we're talking to Believers Club, uh, you should not be acting like some of these people in the world. Some of the people in the world are just off their rocker right now, okay? You know, cheese is not on the cracker, okay? And we don't want that, okay? So I work in different areas with different people and, uh, and um, I help people, and but I have to keep my mindset. I have to have a good attitude. I have to do and enjoy where I am right now, um, you know, prior to even the plan. And just because we still have to uh, live in this life. Amen. That's right. So we're going to make our moderation be known to all men. That means anybody, enemies, uh, enemy, uh, uh, friends and foe or anybody, we have to have a good attitude for Christ. That's number one. Okay. So we're going to pray. We're going to have a good attitude, okay? And the Lord is at hand. I kind of wonder why he put that in there. 
But number five said, the Lord is at hand. Even today, the Lord is at hand. Amen. The Lord is at hand. So even your good attitude, the Lord is at, and, and, at hand. And he is going to have to come first in all that we do because the Lord is who we strive to be like and want to be um, accountable to. So the Lord is at hand. And we can't ever forget that no matter what our goals are, no matter what we try to do, the time is near. As you know, I'm not going to go to all this. I'm not doing a gloom, doom and gloom message, but the Lord is at hand. Everybody wants to go to heaven, but nobody wants to die. But I'm just saying that's another message for another day. All right. But the Lord is at hand. He's at hand. OK. And we're going to go to number six, which says, be careful or anxious for nothing. But in, all, in everything, in prayer and supplication and thanksgiving, let your, uh, let, excuse me, let your request be known to God. So you have to request. So you have to pray. You have to pray. Get, let God help you with that game plan. And uh, God will help you out. And we're going to, um, you know, man, prayer, prayer. And, I, I, I'm, and I'm not saying I'm, uh, I don't want to be here. I don't want to do the yo-yo. So when I talk to you and I get excited about talking about God with you, because it just reminds me and that we're in this together, um, but our plans are, are separate. Um, but we have to pray about all that we want, all that we desire. Uh, let it uh, hopefully, like I said, be his will in our lives. And he with that game plan and with that prayer, if there's anything we're off track, um, he will help us to um, overcome that hurdle um, and if we don't have the good attitude we don't have that we need to uh, work on the attitudes prayer will help us and we have a mindset of um of game planning to get better Amen. and um and i want to say this when you when it says be anxious for nothing and all things give prayer and supplication with all it kind of reminds me of other scripture i know other stuff is is something that you have heard of before but whether you heard of it or what have you not, it's the practical application that we need to make sure that we still do. Amen? Okay, my sisters? Okay. But that's when it says, be anxious for nothing. But we're going to do what Matthew 6, 35 says in our game plan. We're going to seek first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness and all other things shall be added unto us. That's part of the game plan. We have to believe. We got the game plan. We're going to be getting the game plan together. But we're going to seek first the kingdom and all his righteousness and all other things, including the game plan, including our desires, will be added on to us. But he's not going to give you anything crazy. So we're talking about within the will of God. OK. All right. So and then we talk about um, one other scripture I want to share with you today is um, uh, Habakkuk. And that's two. 22 okay and i want to i was going over this uh book in some one of the books that i really don't read a lot uh but i either heard different bits and pieces but i want to go in there I'm myself i'm gonna go and look into it but two 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 twenty two let me see do, 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 do. I'm so sure. oh i know what it says and and two two it says and the lord answered me and said write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he may run that read it okay so that's when the vision is important every every vision should have a, a written down plan that's where you don't have to go off the top of your head you can look at that vision you can put it on your mirror you can put it um wherever you need to see it at you're going to make that vision plain when god gives you that game plan he's going to make it plain for you he's going to tell you all that you need to do and, all, and you're going to say, hey, God, this is a game plan. This is what we come up with. So when you have a game plan, you won't be freezing. You won't be like a deer in headlights. You can kind of keep it moving. Amen? So that's what we're going to do. We have to have a game plan. And that's what we're going to do. So on the recap, real quick, you got to pray. Okay? You got to be thankful. Rejoice again. I say in the Lord alone when you try to get this game plan together. And then we're going to make our supplications be known unto God. Amen. He said, again, I say rejoice. Amen. So, we're going to seek first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness and all the other things shall be added unto us. 
And we're going to write that vision down. If you uh, want to be a business owner, you want to uh, still open up a daycare, you still want to get your uh, education, your GED, your master's, your whatever you in the situation is, that's part of your game plan. And you need to write that down and make it plain. And I'm just saying to you right now, we're not going to be in fear. You can't be in fear in the game because the game plan will, will, will help you come against fear, come against doubt. Because that way you have it, you look at it, you remind yourself, and you can run with it. Amen? All right. So uh, that's part one. And we're going to write a vision. So, um, And that's to the Believers Club, okay? And if you're a believer and you have received uh, the Lord Christ Jesus in your life and as a Savior, and He is your Savior and your go-to guy, He's the head coach, He's the owner, general manager. I'm just talking sports right so that's what we do so we're going to pray about that and for those who aren't the non-believers club or the person who haven't come on board i encourage you that no matter what you do all things are temporary and you need to receive god in your life christ in your life it's to make him your savior make him your number one and make him your your go-to guy because god loves you jesus loves you and he died for you he died for us, amen, and he died that you have life and life more abundantly. So for those who are not born again, I encourage you, receive Christ in your life, be baptized in Jesus' name, and get that game plan, okay? Amen. And we thank you right now for those who are listening and have the ears to hear. We love you uh, from the ministry, and uh, we thank you. Uh, man, it's just I miss being there. We miss being there because we have so much fun and the music and the singing and and stuff like that. But um, when it goes down to it, when it boils down to it, um, we have to have a game plan. And, and, and in that game plan, I want to say we have to include, include prayer and, and, and dancing and singing of our own in our own homes or in our own spaces and, 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 and uh, where we are, where we lay our head and where we get up and, and just be so thankful and and God, we just love you so much. So, Believers Club, prayer, hang in there. Do what you need to do. We're going to get it together. We can't lose. We, he's already fought the battle and won the fight. Non-believers, get on board. Let God help you. Don't do it on your own anymore. Even the, non even the believers. So, receive Christ in your life. He loves you so much. This is just a time that he just reach out to God and just let him know that you appreciate him and he loves you so much. I'm not trying to get off another subject, but receive Christ in your life. Rededicate your life if necessary for those who are in the Believer Club and their membership is kind of expired. Okay? So, um, from First Baptist of Atlanta, um, and we, we care for you so much. And uh, God bless and I look forward to seeing you, uh, not even in heaven, but just succeeding in your goals right now. In Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Peace. All right. Bye-bye.